Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to have a look at the completely fascinating, wonderful Goto Mark X mount. And in this case, it's got an MX41 65mm telescope on it, a refractor, 1000mm focal length. Wonderful telescope. But the main thing here is this mount. This mount is spectacular. Uh, it's a very high demand item in Japan, the Japanese market. These come up and these things are almost 50 years old and they go for a fortune. They go for a lot of money. I was lucky enough to get one of these with a nice little 65 millimeter scope on it. I'm very delighted to have this. Here it is shown with the uh, sunscreens and uh, an optional camera mount here. This is just a little ball head that attaches to the top of the scope. This mount is highly regarded. It has a polar scope installed, comes with every mount. It's modular, it comes apart in several smaller pieces, and it's extremely well made. It's one of the highest quality little mounts you're ever gonna see. It's not that little either. It's a, a kind of a medium class mount. Goto Kogaku had been around for many, many years when this mount came out. Uh, in the 50s, 40s, 30s, it was a renowned telescope and became a very uh, substantial fixture in the Japanese telescope market along with Nikon and uh, Pentax, maybe a couple of others. Uh, but the Goto brand and the others were completely shocked and amazed and surprised by the upsurgence of this new company called Takahashi. In 1967, they came along with uh, a series of revolutionary scopes. They had the first, the TS-80 APO telescope, 1972, uh, was the first APO telescope, true APO, produced in Japan. Uh, in 1973, they had the TS-653, a diminutive little ultra-portable kind of a telescope that you could take pictures with very easily. Uh, Goto was set aback by all that stuff, so they kind of went to town. Don Chatfield has written an extremely well-documented article about that. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. And they just went completely nuts. They made the Mark X system. It wasn't just this scope. It wasn't just this mount. They had a whole series of telescopes, refractors, reflectors, very high quality. They started to get into ED apos or semi-apos at first. Um, so it was just a, a completely astounding response on the part of Goto to this upstart Takahashi. The Mark X system included lots of different scopes. The, probably the um, flagship scopes of the era were 80 millimeter refractors. And Goto must have produced 12 or 14 different varieties. My goodness, there are all kinds of them. F-15s to F-8s, they're very... Uh, you know, ED Apos, uh, Acromats, all sorts of wonderful things. So anyway, this is historic in that sense. This is this superb Goto Mark X mount. There's one thing I want to show you is this. When you're polar aligning it, this thing is very easy to move. Lock it down like so, and you got to lock down here. This is the latitude adjustment wrench provided by Goto. Goes right on here. This is a turnbuckle kind of a system. It's got a couple of lock nuts here. One there. And one there. It's supposed to be good from 18 to 48 degrees. The solar screen arrangement on this scope is nice. It's got a nice clamp. Nice heavy metal clamp that goes on there. And there are the two screens. The only issue is that the two screens are uh, plastic and this has just a, a friction kind of a alligator clamp here. The other one broke, the black one broke, so I had to repair it, kind of a cheesy little repair job, but um, that was the only way I could think of to fix it. It's not a big deal anyway. Like many modern clamshells, 
This one has a quarter inch 20 bolt coming out of the top so you can put a, put a nice camera on there, put a ball head with the camera. This is kind of a throwback to when people used to do piggyback astrophotography. I don't know how many people still do that. Back in the day it was quite a thing, but nowadays I don't think many people do this. These are extremely well made. This just slides right on. There's a place for a locking nut there. Oh, let me lock it. Let's see it move here. It's beautiful. Smooth motion on this mount. Beautiful. Goto in there, search for perfection has inserted stainless steel inserts here in each of the bolt holes. And the reason for that is this is aluminum. And the aluminum is pretty soft and the stainless steel is extremely strong. You'll never strip these out. If this scope has any weak spots, it's the finder. It's only a six by 18 finder. It's a real tiny little thing. Um, it's just barely adequate. Uh, it should have a much bigger finder. 6 by 30 I would say would be minimum for this size scope. Let's open the box and see what's inside. Here you have the OTA. Nice foam packing there. This is the solar screen. There are the two solar screens. Inside here we have a set of eyepieces, got a 25 millimeter, 6 millimeter, and a 12 and a half millimeter. Here, star diagonal. All of this, boy, this is like a time capsule. These things look new. Here we have the Goto 65 millimeter set up next to a Unitron 60 millimeter. Roughly the same class of telescope, but look at the difference in the dimensions. The tube on the Goto 65 millimeters is about 80 millimeters in diameter. This tube is about 68 millimeters in diameter. They're almost the same class telescope, but they're vastly different in terms of the scale. Especially, look at the mounts. The mounts are completely different. This is a massive mount for a 65 millimeter telescope. Of course, this mount was used with much bigger scopes as well. This is strictly limited to the 60 millimeter class unitrons. Here's the real competition for the Goto 65 millimeter. Takahashi TS65D. This is the same aperture, 65 millimeters, same focal length. But this one is a semi-apple. has a little bit of an optical edge over the Goto. And look at the robust mount that this thing comes with. This thing is designed to intimidate. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the GoTo Mark X 65mm telescope. Thank you for watching.